uh, than we started. Because you can go in, get a paid engagement, which is great, but the only thing worse than getting one paid engagement would be getting one and then never getting another one. Before you go into the engagement, one, and I said it yesterday, you want to know the objectives, right? What are the objectives that once you leave, the audience is able to demonstrate blank? The audience is, is, is able to share the definition of a financial freedom funnel, right? That could be an objective for this event, for instance. So we want to know the objectives before we go in. Uh, so that, that would be, that would be the, fir the first and the biggest thing. I'm not going to spell it all the way out. I'll just put o OBJ, and I'm not talking about the football player. But objectives, right? So we want to make sure that we hit on the objectives so that for us, it makes us look good. Even though we're last in the equation, the first is the decision maker. Entrepreneur, stop, 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 stop. Real quick, you don't need this to make money. All you need is the phone that you already have access to, a ring light, and a microphone. That's it. Give me an hour of your time and I'll show you how you can start a podcast with a $50 microphone, $30 ring light, and the phone you already have access to. And I'm going to break down my 4P strategy for you. And in that strategy, I'm going to show you how you can become the go-to expert in your industry, how you can increase your customer base, and then how you can have the ability to be in front of clients and customers presenting your product and or service Daily, weekly, monthly, year around. All right. So like I said, all I need is just one hour of your time in this training. I'm going to break this down for you and show you what it looks like for you to implement it directly in your business. Stop listening to these online gurus tell you about all this equipment. What is this? We don't need that. We just need the three things I told you, but mainly you need to be in the training. So hit the link down below, sign up for the training, and I'm going to see you there. This is your year. This is your year to elevate, and this is your year to be known. Hit the link, sign up, let's get you paid. The decision maker has objectives that they want to hit for the event, that they want to hit for the conference. And if you hit those objectives, then it makes them happy, and it also makes the person happy who's signing the check. So that it's always important to help the decision maker out, but then make sure that their audience is fed, right? So the first thing is objectives. The next thing we want to do is just like my dad also said, you don't want to bore people just telling them facts. Everybody in this room is extremely, extremely, extremely knowledgeable in their area of expertise, right? In their zone of genius, their, their, their ZOE. But just because you're up here doesn't mean the audience is going to meet you there, right? Uh, I, I, I've heard it said before, I can't remember the exact gentleman, but when he would put his presentations together, he would put them at, he would write them out and then he would come back and then make sure that everything was at a third to fifth grade level so that everybody understood. We don't want to hit people with the technical mumbo jumbo or all this jargon. We're going to lose them, right? So we want to, we want to be, I'm going to put, we want to be easy in making sure that the people understand what we've shared so that they can apply it, which makes it easy for the objective to be met, right? So we want to make sure that people can easily understand, easily digest what we've said so that they can apply the information. If it's really good, if it's just motivational and they can't apply it because we've used words that were over their head and different things like that, then we lose them. We lose them. The other point I want to hit on, and like I told you yesterday, I like to do three points. I'm going to do a few more than three points because we have like two more minutes. Uh, stories, right? Facts and stories, well, facts are 22 times more likely to be remembered by way of telling stories. I shared that when I did the TEDx with the, with the kids presentation. And I told stories about my childhood. I told stories about hearing fire trucks when I, I, I was uh, growing up in Baton Rouge. And I told stories about seeing policemen. And these were things that I wanted to do. And by sharing that story with them, even though I was probably like 30 at the time, but I had the ability to connect with a sixth grader, a seventh grader, an eighth grader, because the story creates that connection point. And if we connect, like my dad always says, you have to collect before you, you have to connect before you collect. So if we connect with people, then they're like, oh, what did you say? Oh, wow, Dr. Brenda, you did what? Oh, Ms. Debbie, you did what? Wait, wait a minute, tell me more about that. And then they get to know more about you through the story. And if they get more to know more about you through the story, then that brings the 
trust like in the no. And then we have the trust like and no people begin to feel as if they know you. They have a relationship with you, even though you might have never talked to them one on one before. But when you start telling stories and when you become vulnerable and when you allow yourself to be open, that really hits on the connection piece for people. And then another one I want to share is before going into the engagement, before going into the engagement, you already want to have a strategy in your mind to how you can turn this into two or three more. And I'm going to hit one, one last point down there. But what is our strategy to where we turn this engagement into a multiplier, right? So how do we set ourselves up to where after we do this, we have a way to where we can connect with more people, right? We make ourselves personable, shake some people's hands and different things like that. Um, but what's our strategy to where we go from that? Can I have, can I have two more minutes there? Just two, two more minutes. Okay. So, so the, the call, we always want to have a strong call to action, depending on the audience, depends on if we can do like a QR code where you give them a freebie or you do a QR code to where people can scan it. They do a survey and then at the end you now have their name, their email address, their telephone number, or even if they have somebody in mind that they want to refer you. So this is a referral strategy. We want to we want to make sure we have a referral strategy in place because the likelihood of it is if you do your due diligence and you Take the time to make sure your content is going to apply for that audience. Every, everybody's going to want to talk to you after the engagement. People are going to want to line up and talk to you. But even in a perfect world, you won't get to talk to all the people in the line. People have got to go. They got to go pick up their kids. They got to go run over here. Got to go do this. Got to do that. Whatever it might be. But if we've already collected their information through our call to action with like a QR code, give them like a little freebie or whatever it might be. Now we have another way we can follow up and connect with them. But the last point I want to hit on is time. The fastest way to uh, kill your speaking career is, or the worst way would be if you get a great speaking engagement, you get a great opportunity, you get, you get 10,000, you get 5,000, you get 7,000, you get 1,000, whatever it might be, right? And then you go over the amount of time. Y'all, one time I spoke at a church, I spoke at a black church, Dr. Brenda, oh my goodness. And, and I'm up here. And I practiced, all right? I went through my presentation, I was prepared, but I didn't prepare for the audience engagement, and I usually do. And they were getting me hyped up, I was getting revved up, and they was giving me amens, and I was down here, and I was like, you gotta get down like Jesus, and we gotta wash the feet, and, and the people were just feeling it. And then I started to see people walking out the room and leaving, I was like, why are these people leaving? I had 45 minutes, I probably went for like an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah, it was bad, it was bad. But we wanna keep that in mind because if somebody has a negative experience, they're more likely to tell five, ten people about the negative experience. If they have a positive experience, they're going to say, man, that was really good. And they might tell like somebody at the house. But if it's a negative experience, they're going to tell five people. So we'll put a negative five. So let's, let's just keep in mind, we always want to know what the objectives are. We get clear on the objectives because that way we keep the decision maker happy. We make sure the people are fed in the room with information that they need. We're easy, we make it easy for them to uh, digest the information to where they can apply it. We tell stories to build our trust, like, and know. Build that rapport with people so they can get to know us and so they can feel like we're connected even though we might have not had a conversation before. We always have a referral strategy in place for how we can turn that one engagement into multiple. And then we have to be conscious, conscious of time. I, I hit on my two minutes so we don't, so we don't uh, leave with a more negative experience uh, then we started because you can go in get a paid engagement, which is great But the only thing worse than getting one paid engagement would be getting one and then never getting another